In later chemistry courses, you'll make this connection between the equilibrium constant and the free energy change of the reaction, which is a thermodynamic quantity. So K fundamentally is a thermodynamic quantity. It's related to the change in state function. And for that reason, we can think about K in terms of Hess's law in a way that's analogous conceptually to the way we think about Hess's law with enthalpy and entropy, adding reactions, scaling reactions, subtracting one reaction from another, reversing a reaction, those kinds of operations that change how a, a reaction looks and allow us to think about reactions we've never run using knowledge of reactions that we have run or that we have information for, we can apply all those same ideas that we've already seen to the equilibrium constant. But the math is a little bit different because of the mathematical form of the relationship between delta G and K, which we won't get into, and from the basic form of the reaction quotient, which is what we'll see in this video. So we're gonna develop three sort of rules, I call them, in, in this video. They really follow pretty straightforwardly from the math of reaction quotients. Three rules for how modifying a reaction changes the value of K. And this is gonna be useful, again, for understanding equilibrium constants for reactions that are unknown or that we want to know about that we've never run from data about reactions that we do know the equilibrium constant for. The three rules are addition, scaling, and reversing. So let's start by defining two hypothetical reactions, R1 and R2. R1 is little a moles of A goes to little c moles of C, and there's K1 for that with the form you see on the slide. And R2 is little b molecules of B going to little d molecules of D, and the form of its reaction quotient is shown here with K2. Of course, both of these being the reaction quotients at equilibrium when they're equal to the equilibrium constant. Let's think about adding reactions one and two, in which case the sum would be the sum of the two reactions. So we've got both reactants on the left-hand side, A and B, and both products on the right-hand side, C and D. Now, we could write the reaction quotient for this new ad addition reaction, the sum of the two reactions, just by inspecting the form of the reaction itself, right? And we get something like this, C and D molarities in the numerator, and A and B molar uh, molarities in the denominator. Nothing too surprising there. But the general idea that we can pull out of this is that this equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient more generally for the sum of the two reactions, R1 and R2, is the product of the two reaction quotients for reactions R1 and R2. So notice that K1 times K2 would give you this result here with C and D molarities in the numerator and A and B molarities in the denominator. So when we add two reactions, R1 and R2, the equilibrium constants are multiplied to find the equilibrium constant of the sum. That's the addition rule. The second is the scaling rule. Let's imagine we took reaction one and multiplied it by some general scaling factor n. So maybe we multiplied it by two or three or divided it by two. This also works for division, of course, right? If we multiplied reaction one by n, the resulting reaction would be n times a molecules of a goes to n times c molecules of c. And again, we could write the reaction quotient in the equilibrium expression for this reaction just by inspecting the form of the reaction, we would get what you see on the slide. But notice that this is K1 to the n power. The equilibrium constant for this scaled reaction is the equilibrium constant of the original reaction raised to the power of the scaling factor n. And this is the scaling rule. Finally, we have the reversing rule which is actually really just a special case of scaling, if you think about it. For example, imagine we switch the reactants and products in reaction one. This is tantamount to negating the stoichiometric coefficients. C, which was a product coefficient, is now a, reaction, a reactant coefficient, and A, which was a reactant coefficient, is now a product coefficient. So in essence, we're flipping the form of the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant. Right? It's like multiplying the reaction coefficients by negative one, and what ends up happening is the reaction quotient is the reciprocal of the reaction quotient for the original reaction. So here, K for the reverse reaction, which we can think of as negative R1, is equal to the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant for reaction one, or K1 to the negative one power. And finally, just as a reminder, this is actually all based on Hess's law and follows from the fact 
that K is fundamentally a thermodynamic quantity because it's directly related to the change in free energy, which is a change in a thermodynamic state function. In this practice problem, we're told that a mixture containing nitrogen, hydrogen, and iodine has the following equilibrium at 400 degrees Celsius, and the chemical equation is given here. I've rewritten it down below as reaction C. We have information about these related reactions, A and B, and their equilibrium constants, K1 and K2. And our goal is to use this information in combination with these operations of addition, scaling, reversing the reactions to determine the equilibrium constant for reaction C. And in this particular problem, we're going to make use of the scaling rule, which I'll highlight in red, and the addition rule, which I'll highlight in blue. But first and foremost, we're going to apply the same conceptual process that we did way back when thinking about Hess's law as applied to enthalpy and entropy changes. We've got to figure out how reactions A and B can be combined to produce, quote unquote, reaction C. And it's worth pausing the video at this point and working it out on your own. I'm just going to kind of present the process, and I'll also link back to a video where we first introduced this process in talking about enthalpy. So as it turns out, reaction C is the reverse of reaction A plus three times reaction B. And we can see that, for example, if we notice that reaction C has two NH3s on the reactant side, and reaction A has those two NH3s on the product side. So we've got a reverse or flip reaction A. And we've got to scale reaction B by three because we need three moles of I2, for example, on the reactant side in the target reaction C. And so remember with enthalpy and entropy, what we would do here is simply then substitute in the known delta H's for reactions A and B, say we were dealing with enthalpy, and then out will pop the enthalpy change for reaction C. There's a little mathematical twist here where we need to apply these rules from the last slide where we add or scale reactions rather than just throwing in K directly. So for example, in adding these two reaction quantities, negative one times A and three times B, we're going to multiply the equilibrium constants. And so KC is equal to some term involving KA times some term involving KB since we're adding those two terms. We also need to incorporate exponents with the Ks because we've scaled both reactions A and B. In scaling reaction A, really reversing it is tantamount to multiplying it by negative 1, we're going to raise K sub A to the negative 1 power. And in multiplying reaction B by 3, we're going to cube K sub B. And so that's why these exponents appear and sparing you all of the messy details of the math and all of the things that you can just plug into your calculator, I'll just say that the final result here comes out to 2.5 times 10 to the fifth power. So this problem demonstrates how we can apply these rules for modifying reactions and figuring out what the resulting K value is to determine the K value for a reaction that we've never run or maybe is very impractical or very difficult to run using knowledge of known equilibrium constants for typically simpler more easily understood reactions. 